Paris is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. But if you speak to anyone who's been, there's a 50-50 split between people who fell in love with it and were disappointed by it. Up until this trip, I fell into the latter category. But after speaking to people who live there and doing some intensive research on where to go, this time I fell head over heels. In this video, we'll be visiting the ultimate food places, the best neighborhoods, ignoring the tourist traps and showing you how to enjoy the best Parisian experience this city has to offer. Paris, the city of love. I watched countless YouTube videos before I came to visit for this, my fifth time in the city, and not one of them gave me what I wanted. I had to dive deeper. Hopefully, this video will help you make the most of your time here. If it does, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so we can keep making these guides. Bonjour, we are in Paris, um, the city of love, and it's absolutely pissing it down. Uh, Sarah has gone to uh, get her makeup and shit sorted in the hotel. I am going to the bar opposite Le Brasserie uh, to get un billet. Got myself my uh, Pat Cronenberg and uh, I really hope that you enjoy our Paris city guide. Sarah's with me now. We are going to get a sandwich from a place called Chez Alain Miam Miam which I've heard great things about from various people who've been here. So let's see what it's all about. Deep in the heart of Le Marche de Enfant Rouge lies Chez Alain Miam Miam, a classic sandwich stall. There's Alain himself, proper geezer. If you want to sit down and eat, exit the market and walk across the road to their restaurant. There's always a queue, but the service is rapid. They sell sandwiches with an array of freshly cut meats and you can choose your filling. A bit like Subway, but instead of being absolute dog shit, it's exceptional. We went for the pastrami with a French cheese and some salad, all toasted so that cheese melts beautifully. It was about 12 quid. <laughs> It's like a posh video, I've seen. That is a moist sandwich. That bread is so good. Oh man, look at that sandwich now. And then that's the whole thing. It's like pastrami with caramelised onions, lettuce, tomato, that's French cheese, and a load of olive oil. So, uh, listen, you can't really go wrong when you've got those ingredients. Now I understand why there were queues outside. He gave me the choice of two cheeses, which I tried both of, and I went for the slightly more potent one. A bit more French, you know what I mean? I ate all of mine in videos. The rest of Le Marche d'Enfant Rouge is just as impressive. From enormous cheese counters to bustling street food stalls, this was full of Parisians going about their daily business. Of course, there's a market staple of fresh meat and fish, and I am a very simple man. When I see somewhere selling fresh oysters, I buy the fresh oysters. This place is slap bang in the middle and I just couldn't resist. There's no shallots, Tabasco or vinegar here, just fresh oysters and a squeeze of lemon. Nowhere to hide with the taste, and they were four quid. That's fantastic. Remarkably, remarkably fresh. Got a little baby one as well. A bit more lemon on this, a little bit more citrus. Stunning. Those oysters were absolutely delicious. So fresh, nice and salty. Tastes like they were fucking straight from the sea. It's like having a shot of seawater um, in a really good way. Not when you sort of like swallow seawater when you get smashed in the face by a wave or anything like that. It's uh, good stuff. And now we're out in the rain again. <sighs> the weather isn't getting any better, but the weather follows us everywhere we go, so that's absolutely fine. I'm from Manchester, I'm used to it. Um, we're going to try and find somewhere now to get... Listen, we're in Paris, we're going to have a croissant because I fucking love croissant. I used to put them away for fun when I was a kid. Um, and I've never had one from Paris before. So, here we go. Tout Auto de Pain is a traditional boulangerie, which is French for bakery. 
In French law, you're only allowed to hold the title of boulangerie if you bake your bread fresh every day. So if you walk past somewhere selling bread that isn't a boulangerie, it's not going to be anywhere near as fresh. We ordered the croissant and Sarah couldn't resist the raspberry tartlet. This all came to three quid. My first croissant dans le Paris. Let's open it up first. <laughs> oh my god. Tastes like pure butter. It's got a nice salty twang to it as well. Salty butter. Really, really nice French butter. Mm, try that. Mm. Oh! Oh! It's crispy and soft. I'm very salty. I'm very delicious. To get out of the rain and plan the rest of the day, we're going to Brasserie La Renaissance. So me and Sarah are just planning out the, uh, the rest of the day and it's suddenly become quite clear to me why she booked Paris for this particular weekend. Did you book this trip for Paris Fashion Week on purpose? No, but it's just a nice coinky dink. Cher is here. Cher. We hopped onto the metro into central Paris, which is a lot cleaner than the tube. See it, say it. Sortie. We are just walking past or through where uh, the Louvre is. Um, it's literally there. That is the Louvre, it's still fucking pissing it down. And the queue to get into the Louvre to see some fucking artwork is incredibly long. Uh, you're looking at about a two hour queue. We're gonna get a fucking beer from this place called the Cafe Palais Royale. Cafe Palais Royale wasn't somewhere we had on the list, but it was pissing down and we needed refreshment. This is 11 euros. <laughs> <laughs> 11, 11 euros. Uh, we are off to Bouillon, what is it? Bouillon Chartier. Bouillon Chartier for some traditional French food. Bouillon Chartier is a grand old restaurant which is about as traditionally French as you can possibly get. Its history dates back all the way to 1896 and it's full to the rafters with classic Parisian ambiance. One thing we didn't realise was that you're probably going to have to share your table and bread with someone else, but we made friends with a couple of Japanese lads and ordered a big bottle of wine. To start, we got Le Bouche à la Reine, which translates to the Queen's Bite. It's a pastry filled with chicken in a creamy white wine sauce. Beautiful creamy chicken in a rich sauce. Very good. I feel like they literally just cook everything and just soak it in butter. I'm not complaining. This place is remarkably cheap. This was only like £3.50, which is marginally more expensive than a Greg's and infinitely better. I do love a Greg's, this is just a little bit more of a bougie Greg's. Next up, mains. For the mains, we got the steak frites, the boeuf bourguignon, which is basically a French beef stew, and the confit duck. Including the wine, this only came to £65, incredible value. Red 
red wine is you. That is so so rich. That is amazing. Oh my god. It tastes like that cow has been swimming in red wine for its entire life or sat in a fucking hot tub vat of bubbling beautiful red wine. The perfect stew. That cow must have been fucking leathered its entire life. Smashing glasses of vino. It tastes like that because that is outrageous. That's so good. Proper full body, quite salty, full of flavour. C'est magnifique. Bread, mopping up, stew. We're going to finish off this bottle of wine. Pretty sharpish. Uh, it's getting a bit busy in here now. After that quintessential French experience, we fancied getting hammered in a more familiar setting, so headed to O'Sullivan's. We're having a good, lovely time here. We're going to stay here for like maybe three, four drinks, then have some more drinks, then have some more drinks somewhere else. And we're just going to keep fucking going because Paris is ours this evening. Unfortunately for the French, it's ours. <laughs> We've just had a lovely time at O'Sullivan's, the Irish bar. Weirdly, we were the only English people in there. Everyone else was French. On the way to the next bar, we walked down the road wondering what the fuck everyone was queuing for, and it turns out it was the queue for the restaurant we were just in earlier. We kept walking until we got to the Frog and Underground, where we sank a shitload more pints. After we were sufficiently lubricated, we hit a place called Fasté. These guys just do various types of croque monsieur, and what better thing to do after smashing a load of ale and tucking into a big fat cheese toasty. Bon appétit! Merci! Bossman was a legend and sorted us out with a couple of his finest crocs, which were a tenner each. We opted for the Fast Day Classic with Gruyere cheese, ham, and bechamel sauce, as well as the spinach, tomato, bechamel, and brie one. And just look at the state of it. It's like the best fucking ham and cheese toasty I've ever had in my entire life. Makes me want to cry. I want to cry. I'm going to ball in the streets of Paris. I'm going to get down on my knees and I'm going to weep for this bechamel sauce because Jesus. Make me this at home. <laughs> mm. That is better than that one. There. That's insane. Yeah. It's so good. It's cheesy, it's gooey, it's fantastic. This fucking arch over here. We are going to a bar, have a couple of drinks. We're going to this place. L'appartement. Bon nuit. After even more pints, our batteries were running out, and as is tradition on this channel, we went for a kebab. But Urfa Durum is no ordinary kebab. I knew as soon as I saw him making fresh flatbreads in the window that this was a special place. 
with boss man slaving over the coals and the meat smelling better than anything I think I've ever smelled before, I was excited. You've got a choice of either chicken or lamb, and we went for the lamb with all the toppings, which was seven pounds. And what you're witnessing here is art. I'd never had Kurdish cuisine before, and if it's all like this, then I need to book a trip to Kurdistan immediately. Just look at that cross section. This is as fresh as it comes. I've just seen the boss man fucking roll out the fucking flatbread. I'm not going to say the thing that I want to say yet. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it because it sounds. It sounds like. Oh, it's the best kebab I've ever had. And it sounds like you say it everywhere, right? I don't say it everywhere. I really don't, I promise you, don't. No. I am amazed. I mean, I mean, all. Look at delicious, and I want more. <laughs> For me, it's the fact that they don't even have to put any sauce on it. In the UK, it's like, oh yeah, chilli, mayo, garlic mayo, all that shit. This place is doing a fucking madness up here in Paris. I'm dumbfounded. I'm lost for words, I'm shocked, I'm stunned. I did not expect to come to Paris and have the best fucking kebab. I'm in love. The hour is late. It's like nearly quarter to 12. And we are gonna go to bed, have a nice kip. My love, do you wanna come and say goodbye to everybody? Good night. Day number two in Paris, and we have come to a place which is right next to our hotel that we came to yesterday when I was waiting for Sarah to um, put her makeup on. We are now here for a bit of breakfast. We have a couple of these croissants. Got a nice pint of Cronenberg 1664. We've also ordered a uh, omelette du fromage. The French invented the omelette, so I feel like it's a rite of passage to try one from its motherland. It was packed with cheese, ham and fluffy egg. Very light. Oh my god. Mm. I wish my omelette game was that strong at home. That is delicious and nutritious. Oh, wash down. With France's finest. We are on the Champs Elysees. Look at all the shops. Might leave her here and just go find a bar, me. Lovely little trip to the Arc de Triomphe down the Champs Elysees. And now we have rented some bikes to cycle to the Eiffel Tower. If you want to come to see the Eiffel Tower and you want to avoid all of the fucking queues and all of the people and the tourists, just come to this little spot here. You get a really nice photo. And the address that you're going to want to put in to get this wonderful photo is 19 Port de Billy. These guys know. That's enough sightseeing for the day. Let's go and get some fucking pints. After ticking off the two tourist spots we had on the list, we headed over to the Latin Quarter to a lovely little restaurant called La Jacobine. It was tiny and we had to put our name down just to get a table. To start, we ordered the French onion soup, obviously, as well as lescargo, or as we like to call them, snails. So 
Good soup. It's damn good soup, is that? Mm. Oh my god. French onion soup from Paris. Oh, honestly, I could drink that for the rest of the day. Wow. And then. Oh, it's all the juice. They're amazing. Maybe a little bit mushroomy, a bit earthy. An earthy yeah. mushroom. An earthy mushroom, yeah. Um, they've just been knocking about in the garden for a while. But like that garlic butter is, is stunning. <laughs> Not that I don't like them, I don't like these. And I've stood on snails and pushed the shells in my garden. I can't eat a fucking snail. For the mains, we got the coq au vin, a French dish with rooster in a red wine stew, and the pork fillet in a creamy mustard sauce. All this came to £62. Tastes like a rooster. I was just gone for a bath in a vineyard. So whiny. Mmm. Well, that, chi that, that chicken is so tender. Say chicken. It is a cock. It is a rooster. It's not, it's not just a chicken. Mmm. Wow. Bad bagel. It's the same. That's out of this world. I've not tried anything like this before. But it's that. Like it's... I feel like I'm going to get pissed off this. Mm. Oh, that's it. That sauce is good, isn't it? Creamy mustard. Oh wow. The Jacobi. The Carabia. We had to wait an hour to get in here. People outside now will have to wait much longer. I've just not tasted anything like this before, so. Fair fucking boy. We walked off all that food for a bit until we found La Maison d'Isabelle, who were incredibly proud of their award for having the best croissant in the whole of Paris. Everything looked great, but we were here for one thing and one thing only, the croissant. This was only a quid. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I totally understand it now. <laughs> it's a work of art. Oh my god, here we go. Oh my god. Listen, as a huge fan of croissants, I can safely say this is without a shadow of a doubt the best croissant I've ever had. In my entire fucking life. You know in England, when you get a croissant, you cut the croissant open and you put butter in it. Don't need to do that here because there's so much butter. If I squoze that, the butter would just piss out of it. Squoze? Squoze is a word. If I squeeze this. Squeeze? Squoze. What do you squeeze? Get, what, how would you juice a lemon? Would you... Squeeze it. But if you did it yesterday, did you... I suppose the Mmm. After Sarah briefly transformed into the pigeon lady from Home Alone, we headed for some drinks across the road at Cafe du Metro. A Moscow Mueller. <laughs> It's badic when your husband really wants a beret. I wanted the beret. I wanted the beret, she wouldn't let me have the beret. Very, very harsh. <laughs> Where's Phoebus? <laughs> 
Walking through Le Marais neighborhood is a must. It is easily our favorite part of Paris and filled with so many amazing bars and restaurants. We went to Le Philosophe for some more traditional French cuisine. It was full of Parisians having a late lunch and we got some of the fresh bread and ordered the steak tartare and the foie gras. This came to £55. I don't really know too much about foie gras. It's fucking expensive. And I never I've never had it before in my life. It's hard to describe. It is anything other than like butter. Fat duck butter. I'm not sure it's the best ethically though. Know. No, it's not, it's really bad. Is it? Yeah. No. I'll show you some things on Google. I have done some research on foie gras. I might stick my uh, my gorgeous, gorgeous steak tartare. This place is fucking thriving and I'm here for it. Just a few bridges across from Notre Dame. Doesn't take long to get to. And I highly, highly fucking recommend you do. I am now going to go to a pub to watch uh, the Manchester Derby. One nil to United at the moment, which is mental. And we've obviously lost to Manchester City because Manchester City are better than us. Because we are. And you know what? Everyone's better than us. Don't know why I got my hopes up. I always do. The hope is the hope that kills you. Hope is a dangerous thing to have for a Manchester United fan. So now we are going to get a crepe because we haven't had a crepe yet and we're in fucking France. And if we didn't have a crepe when we were in France, then we would be fucking heathens and banished from this land. So we're going to go get one and. Uh, we shall report back to you. We walked back through the wonderful La Marais to a creperie called Suzette, which was tiny inside, but smelled incredible. Sarah got the Suzette with a Grand Marnier flambe, whereas I opted for a savory buckwheat crepe with ham, cheese and egg. This was £40 with a couple of drinks. Oh crap, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen. You, you look at it, uh, a, a special crepe here. That is just so good. And all I want to do is just stay here and eat these. Unfortunately, we couldn't get into the steak restaurant we wanted to called Robert et Louise, so we walked a bit further on to a place called La Boeuf for a big fat plate of steak frites. 
Boss Man got us in quick before all the reservations were due so we could try his impressive hunk of meat. This was £55. Oh my god, the chai is so crispy and the inside is so juicy. Okay, this, you're looking at a very, very, mm, a very, very, very good, oh my god. I've never got a crisp like that on a steak, ever, in my entire life. I can't imagine how hot that pan is to achieve this. Mm. Give me more sticky. <laughs> Freshly cooked potatoes. So crispy. Before I came here, this time round, I didn't like that. I genuinely did not like it. I thought it was dirty, I thought the people were rude, and I'd always had a bad time here. This time round, it's just different. This city is genuinely fantastic, and I never thought I'd say this, genuinely never thought I'd say this. So I said to Sarah, I was like, I'm not really excited about this one. I can't wait to come back here and try a load more stuff, because this place is fucking wicked. Everyone knows L'Entrecote de Relais, the steak place with the green sauce and the three hour queue. But not everyone knows there's a sister restaurant here that does the exact same thing but in a baguette. So if you don't fancy spending half the day sat in a queue, just come to La Baguette de Relais and experience the same thing but between bread. Even better, this was £16. Um, the chippies are delicious and the steak is very nice. What did you ask for, medium rare? Yes, perfect and it is like a garlicky, tangy sauce on a very crispy piece of bread and I want a bit more <laughs> I can see, listen, this is the first time I've ever tried that green sauce. That green sauce is a joke. It is on my phone charger. Do not lick that, do not. <laughs> what makes everything better? Putting it between two fucking slices of bread. Kronenberg here as well. I can highly recommend this place because that was genuinely sensational. However, I must caveat this. I've still not been to the, the actual restaurant in, in Paris or in London, the proper one. But this, if you don't want to queue up and if you want a quick fucking snack, get it in, get it out, bosh. This is as good as it gets. So, uh, la baguette de relais. Je uh, joue au foot, je, je vais aller au McDo. Nice. Je vais bibliothèque. I always laugh at Jono when he trips over and I just say, oh God, you give me the ick so badly. And today, I got humbled. I <laughs> fell down a grid. <laughs> and my ankle is so sore and so swollen and I've done, <laughs> and I've done 16,000 steps. Oh, okay, anyway, <laughs> we, we, we're going to go to bed now. <laughs> right, no, no, anyway, we've had a fucking great day. We'll see you tomorrow. My ankle hurts. J'ai mal à la foot. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Final day here in Paris and now the sun decides to fucking come out. Shit house. Unfortunately, we have to fucking get a train to the airport at like half past 11. Beau and me is a bit more modern than your traditional boulangeries, but the selection of pastries they had on display was seriously impressive. But this was my last day in Paris and I was craving one last croissant. Another croissant review for you, eh? Mmm, that is light crispy and delicious frankly you know it's good when the middle looks like that I'll finish this then I'm gonna find a uh, a brasserie
I'm gutted I found La Plomme du Cantal so late because the menu here looked amazing, but I sat here with a few pints and people watched for the rest of my short morning in Paris, the city that unexpectedly stole my heart. So, we're in the airport. And these fantastic chicken crisps. Thank you very much for um, watching and please do like and please do subscribe. Tell your friends. <laughs> comment and say hello. And we will see you next time. Say au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.